very warm good morning to all so after a week we are again going to concentrate our lesson transportation in animals and plants part 3 so already we have completed part 1 and part 2 uh, just go through the videos again so two classes were finished in this lesson so just go through the video kindly spend some time for that uh, previous videos and then get into this video because um, then only you will get the continuity of this lesson okay so in video 1 and video 2 that is part 1 and part 2 regarding this lesson transportation in animals and plants we have discussed that what is transportation how transportation is taking place in inside our body that is internal what is internal transport and what is the mechanism behind that one that is circulation for that circulation blood is very important so uh, we have discussed what is blood what are the components of blood how we can identify the components that is by centrifugation and we know that four components are there plasma or BZs, WBZs and then platelets and other names also we have studied and we have discussed about the difference also and we have discussed that one more thing that uh, what is the mechanism of coagulation of blood everything so these are the topics we have covered in part 1 and part 2 so before getting into this video go through the previous videos just kindly spend some time for that one okay now we are going to see part 3 of this lesson transportation in animals and plants so today we are going to see the circulatory system in animals see circulatory system is nothing but the circulation which is taking place and there are usually two types of circulation one is open circulatory system and another one is closed circulatory system see i'm not talking about humans generally i'm talking about the animals so generally circulatory system is of two types one is open circulatory system and another one is closed circulatory system so what is open circulatory system so, so some animals have open type of circulation whereas some animals have closed type of circulation so let's see what is open circulatory system in open circulatory system inside the body all the cavity is filled with fluid all the cavity is filled with fluid and it can be either blood or any other fluid which is similar to blood we know that blood is the only thing which is doing circulation okay but in open circulatory system all the body cavity is filled with even blood or some other fluid which is similar to blood so what do you mean by body cavity body cavity is nothing but the fluid or the substance which is present in our body so in that fluid in that substance only our organs are all placed okay so in open circulatory system but in case of open circulatory system there are no blood vessels to carry blood and we know that blood is flowing to all parts of the body and how it is flowing inside the tube like structure that is called blood vessel i hope you remember the, the picture red line blue line red line meaning or oh, it carries oxygenated blood blue lines deoxygenated blood i hope you remember just recall that but in open circulatory system there are no blood vessels so no blood vessels means no need to carry the blood which means do not have any tube like structure to carry the blood so it is present inside the blood okay so it is something like all the organs of the body are embedded in the blood so here all the organs are embedded in the blood that blood is called as hemolymph that is called what hemolymph so the fluid i told the blood all the organs are embedded in the blood actually it is not the blood all the organs are embedded in a fluid that fluid is called hemolymph so blood usually blood is pumped by the heart isn't it so blood is pumped by the heart in body cavities here blood is present in all body cavity where there is space that is filled with the blood 
so who pumps the blood heart so generally heart is the pumping organ which can which means that it sends blood to different parts of the body isn't it but in open circulatory system we use the term hemolymph because all the organs are embedded in that fluid only here there is no separation no tube like structure no blood vessels are present so heart is the pumping organ that is the control heart controls the blood okay in open circulatory system uh, where we can find this open circulatory system you can find in insects such as ants cockroach grasshopper scorpion and all i don't know you people have no if whenever you find any uh, wounded cockroach or if you sometimes what they will do they will hit the cockroach also if you, if you notice you can't find any red color blood and all instead of that you can find a white liquid so it's a, not a exactly liquid or some white fluid is coming out of its body have you ever noticed that one uh, in ants grasshopper or scorpion also that is nothing but hemolymph because heme heme means what blood only lymph is another fluid in these type of uh, insects there is no separation heme and lymph together they are present in the body cavity itself okay it so it gives some it shows some what whitish color that is the fluid so open circulatory system is found in these uh, insects it generally they comes under mollusca arthropods and all so instead of blood hemolymph is found in this animal basically a uh, hemolymph is a combination of blood and fluid see fu fluid uh, even in human being is also you can find that lymph but it is present in a interstitial it is a interstitial fluid interstitial means uh, between the cells you can find a fluid okay because blood is carried by blood vessels in our in our body that is in human being in case of human being blood is traveling inside the blood vessel lymph is present between the cells okay but in case of uh, these insects blood and lymph join together there is no blood vessel so it will be mixed with each other so all the organs all the cells are embedded in the whole body cavity hence heme plus lymph it is hemolymph so in this blanumals in this uh, insects you should not use the word blood instead of that what is the fluid is traveling uh, which is present inside their body that is called hemolymph so in open circulatory system you cannot find any blood vessels there is no blood vessels so the blood mix with the fluid hence it is called hemolymph just visualize all the organs are present in the ocean of the lymph like that only it will be present in their body okay the next one is closed circulatory system i told there are two types of circulatory system one is open circulatory system and another one is closed circulatory so when we talk about the closed circulatory system blood closed that is uh, in uh, through the blood vessels blood jar blood flows inside the blood vessels that is blood remain within the vessel vessel is some what tube like structure okay so you could not we cannot find any blood in the cavities body cavities body means what that is total body all the organs are present inside the body cavity only do you think all the organs are floating in the blood no they are floating in the body cavity okay blood is traveling inside the blood vessels so there is no chance of mixing of blood and the interstitial fluid limp here in our body also we are having limp limp is present between the cells so cells are floating in the limp only okay so here there is no chance of mixing of blood because blood is traveling inside the blood vessels safely so uh, and, uh, here you can see blood flowing through the blood vessels so the interstitial fluid is separated from the blood so in uh, <clears throat> in this blood and lymph are two different fluids separate from each other and they should not mix with each other so that is because of the blood vessels okay and heart pumps the blood here also 
the organ which pumps the blood is heart only through the blood vessels but in closed circulatory system heart pumps the blood vessels but sorry heart pumps the blood but there is no blood vessels okay now uh, it does not have if uh, does not fill body cavities because it is safely traveling in the blood vessel itself so you could not find any blood uh, in the body cavity okay and where we can find this closed circulatory system you can found in the vertebrates and then some invertebrates also what do you mean by vertebrates and invertebrates vertebrates are having spinal cord invertebrates you could not find any spinal cord so uh, vertebrates you can find uh, uh, all vertebrates are having the closed circulatory system for best example we human being uh, fish and all if you take they are having blood because they are having blood vessels and some invertebrates also having closed type of circulatory system okay now we are going to see human circulatory system in more detail so we know that we comes under closed circulatory system now we are going to concentrate only the human circulatory system so what are the various parts of the human circulatory system and its function that is the main concept we are going to discuss in this heading human circulatory system okay as you can see in this picture the blood flowing throughout the body through the lines red lines blue lines i hope you can able to find this picture isn't it can you able to see yeah the blood flowing throughout their body with the help of the lines the lines are nothing but two black structure which are called blood vessels some of them are thick tubes and some of them are extremely thin tubes can you able to find mom okay only which these tubes only blood is confined that is blood is traveling inside we will not able to find the blood in the body cavities can you able to find any other in the part that is a uh, um, around the lungs or around the kidneys or anywhere no see all body cavity means what the cavity the fluid which is present inside our body in that cavity only all the organs are present but can you find any blood uh, strains on that uh, total body cavity no because we are following in our human beings we are following closed circulatory system okay we know that which is the main organ which is pumping the blood heart so it is the controlling organ of the blood so if we talk about human heart the organ which pumps the blood to various parts of the body that is the function of the heart what is the main function of the heart heart pumps the blood from the heart and it will pumps the blood to all parts of the body even uh, from where our head is receiving the blood our toe is also receiving the blood isn't it so that is the main function heart pumps the blood to various parts of the body and we can divide the heart into four chambers four chambers chambers means uh, rooms the heart is generally divided into four chambers imagine you know the shape of the heart isn't it heart symbol it's not exactly that one uh, somewhat it looks like that symbol okay it is and we are have to divide into four first uh, uh, what i can say longitudinal divide so you will get half for example if we cut a lemon uh, if we cut a lemon we get two halves isn't it like that if we cut the heart longitudinally that is a uh, slanting wise if you cut slantingly you will get two hearts upper part and lower part isn't it the upper part is called auricles a u r i c l e s auricles and the lower part is generally called as ventricles v e n t r i c l e s so if you cut the heart that is if you have a cross section of it that is in slanting wise you will get two halves the upper one is auricle the lower one is ventricle i told that the heart is made up of four chambers so now again you have to cut the uh, just imagine you are going to make a dotted lines in the standing wise standing line wise okay now you can get the right and left part isn't it for example if you cut the imagine cutting the apple how you will cut from the straight wise that is standing line like isn't it now we will get right and left isn't it so now we are getting right and left now 
totally four parts we have got stand uh, slanting wise two parts standing line wise two parts totally four parts so auricles right auricle left auricle because the upper part is auricles if you cut uh, um, what it is standing wise you will get upper parts itself you will get two upper parts one is right auricle another one is left auricle and down part is ventricle after cutting in a standing wise you will get right ventricle left ventricle that is here it was given in the bracket two auricles that is right auricle left auricle and you will get two ventricles right ventricle left ventricle so our heart is divided into four chambers they are called RA, LA, RV, LV. RA represents a right auricles, LA represents left auricles. Then RV represents a right ventricles, LV represents left ventricle. So please concentrate on the parts because understanding the working of heart is very important to understand the circulatory system. If you want to know the circulatory system, we should know we should concentrate on the parts the four parts then only you can say how the heart is pumping the blood which part which chamber is going to pump the blood followed by the next next which chamber and all okay so what is the need of dividing the heart into chambers that is the next question why we have to divide this into four chambers even two is enough or even only one heart only we are having why we have to divide it is very important what it is the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood should not mix with each other. For that purpose only, we are generally dividing the heart into four chambers. For that purpose only, we are having right left auricles, right left ventricles. So in your respiration lesson, I hope uh, you remember ox blood uh, oxygen that is uh, from the lungs alveoli is the best place for the exchange of gases is taking place the oxygen along with the blood it is called oxygenated blood that will goes to all parts of the body for the energy production and the carbon dioxide released from the cells it will again reach the lungs to release the carbon dioxide isn't it so there are two different uh, vessels are there to carry the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood it should not mix with each other if it is mixed again it will become impure only isn't it so for that purpose only we are have we are dividing the chambers so uh, oxygenated blood meanings what that is rich in oxygen deoxygenated blood means the blood which is rich in carbon dioxide so oxygenated blood is needed by each and every cells of our body carbon dioxide that is deoxygenated blood is not required by the cells so the blood carrying the oxygen oxygenated blood is called good blood and the blood which carrying the de uh, carbon dioxide is called bad blood otherwise called foul blood so to keep the oxygenated blood and deoxygenated blood uh, separately to separate the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood we are having the different chambers okay and the next question is what the auricles and ventricles do okay we are dividing we, we need chambers to uh, separate the oxygenated blood and deoxygenated blood okay quite good why what are what the auricles and ventricles do that is the question or the what how it is doing the pumping mechanism isn't it so auricles are generally called as receiving chambers See here, uh, I told that auricles, ventricles are the two main chambers. Again, they are divided into right, left, isn't it? So auricles are the ch called generally called receiving chambers. Receiving means what? Something it is going to receive, collect. Okay. So they always receive blood. Both right auricle and left auricle. Both auricles they are called what? Receiving chambers because they are going to what they are going to receive. They are going to receive the blood only okay and ventricles whereas ventricles are the pumping chambers pumping means what ma you are going to pump the blood to somewhere else okay so generally auricles are the receiving chambers which are going to receive the blood whereas ventricles are the pumping chambers 
So what they will do? They are going to pump the blood to somewhere else. So left ventricle and right ventricles are going to pump the blood. So for the, these are the or this is the main work is done by the uh, auricles and ventricles. Auricles and ventricles. Okay. The next question is. Why do we have to receive? Why do why do we have two receiving chambers and two pumping chambers? Isn't it? We are having two receiving chambers. That is what a right auricle, left auricle, and we are having two pumping chambers: right ventricle, left ventricle. What is the purpose of that one? One receiving chamber is for oxygenated blood, and another receiving chamber is for deoxygenated blood. Because we have to separate the blood, no, we should, it should not mix with each other, isn't it? So, one receiving chamber, what it will do? It will receive only the oxygenated blood. What about the another receiving chamber? That receiving chamber is going to receive only the deoxygenated blood. Similarly, we are having two ventricles. What is the main function of the ventricle? They are called as pumping chambers. So, what they are going to do? One chamber is going to pump the blood. What blood? Oxygenated blood. And another pumping chamber will do that is going to pump the deoxygenated blood. Okay. To some else. Okay. So I hope now it is clear that why do we have four separate chambers inside our heart? This chambers ensures that oxygenated and deoxygenated blood do not mix with each other. That is the main thing. Why we are having auricles and ventricles? They are receiving chambers, they are pumping chambers. Why we are having two auricles and two ventricles? One, of the, one, is, one is for receiving the oxygenated blood and another one is for deoxygenated blood. I hope you are somewhat clear. Now, the way enter the circulation of blood takes place. Now, we are going to see how the circulation is taking place. So, what is circulation? It means the movement of blood from heart to different parts of the body. Why we am saying from heart? Because heart is the pumping thing. So from blood, sorry, from heart only blood is going to travel to all parts of our body. Isn't it? So what, do you, what is circulation? It is movement of blood from heart to different parts of the body through lungs. Why I am saying through lungs? Because in lungs only gaseous exchange is going to take place. From the lungs, especially in alveoli only, going to give the oxygen. There only oxygen is going to mix with the blood. And there only carbon dioxide is going to release from the blood. Isn't it? So, the circulation not only shows only the heart, lungs function is also very important. Okay. So, the movement of blood from heart to different parts of the body through lungs. That is called circulation. Okay. And in our human body, generally we are, uh, in our body, uh, double circulation is taking place. What do you mean by double circulation? Double means what? Two. Isn't it? So generally in our body, we are having double circulation. Because there are two circulation is taking place. One is the circulation of oxygenated blood and another one is the circulation of deoxygenator blood isn't it okay let us look at in precise way okay just i'm sorry i'm sorry uh, just see this picture imagine that uh, here i'm not giving exactly that uh, heart shape just i'm going to uh, imagine uh, the chambers alone it was given okay first i'm uh, slanting wise i'm dividing so by a top auricle and ventricle auricle is otherwise called atrium here it is atrium is given if you cut uh, again if you make a, a standing wise we will get right left so right atrium left atrium right atrium is otherwise called right auricle and left atrium is otherwise called left auricle and down right ventricle left ventricle imagine this is the heart what is circulation movement of blood from heart to different body here the term body given no here body means all different body parts okay so from heart to parts through lungs so this here this side it was given for the easy understanding it was given like that okay so first what it will do from different body parts what blood will come up deoxygenated so from body just look at the body from body 
can you able to the see the arrow mark oh, okay from body the deoxygenated blood because body means what here represents all the cells of the body all the cells of the body will excrete what carbon dioxide all the during respiration process think respiration process oxygen combines with the glucose and produce energy along with the energy carbon dioxide is also produced that is not necessary for our body so the cells excrete this carbon dioxide into the blood and it travels along with the blood then it reaches the lungs to remove isn't it so here the body represents all organs of the cells of the body what it is going to remove deoxygenated blood that blood enters the enters into the first right atrium that blood is enters into the right atrium we know that atrium is a what a receiving chamber isn't it so all atrium is nothing but auricles auricles are receiving chambers so the right atrium that is the right auricle is going to receive what blood deoxygenated blood then that blood enters into the right ventricle that blood enters into right ventricle okay from the right ventricle ventricle means what ma it will do pumping cham pumping chamber isn't it then this ventricle pumps the blood from pumps the what blood deoxygenated blood because right atrium receives deoxygenated blood only isn't it so that deoxygenated blood enters into the ventricle that ventricle pumps this deoxygenated blood to the lungs why because lungs only we are having alveoli in the alveoli the blood what it will do it removes the carbon dioxide because a gaseous exchange is taking place isn't it so the lungs or the organs inside uh, inside the lungs the real exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide is taking place and we have learned this in respiration so in the alveoli sorry in the lungs alveoli are present so once that exchange is happened the blood that you pump comes out by the lungs that will be sent so now what happened oxygen now the deoxygenated blood is pumped into the lungs so carbon dioxide will be removed by the lungs at the same time oxygen gaseous exchange means what again oxygen we are giving carbon dioxide is exchanged by the oxygen isn't it so that now the blood combines with the oxygen so from the lungs and again see the arrow mark from the lungs the oxygenated blood now from the lungs what happened oxygenated blood enters into the left atrium that is left auricle auricle is a receiving chamber isn't it so it receiving what blood oxygenated blood now this left atrium is receiving the oxygenated blood then leaves this blood into left ventricle ventricle means pumping chamber pump this blood what blood oxygenated blood to different parts of the body okay i hope you understand so so both so here two circulation is taking place one is for deoxygenated blood and another one is for oxygenated blood so and it should not mix with each other so so separate lines are given so we are saying two circulation is happening hence it is called double circulation one circulation is for oxygenated blood and another circulation is for deoxygenated blood so this type of circulation is called double circulation so in human beings no mixing of deoxygenated blood and oxygenated blood so the blood flow is taking place inside the blood vessels okay i hope uh, you what somewhat understand about this concept say so just go through the video again so i am repeating just go through the previous videos one part 1 and part 2 then come to the again this video part 3 then only you will get somewhat clear idea okay thank you i'll continue in the next class